participation from all of you, but what else is new? All of my presentations center around audience participation. So the more you volunteer, the happier I'll be. I'm definitely going to need you to hold my hand through some of this. It is my first time with this presentation. Um, any feedback you have for me will be much appreciated. Um, but my favorite part will be at the end where I do a mock interview. So if you think that you want to be uh, interviewed um, with some basic softball style questions, I would love for you to do that. So let me know as we get closer to that, whether or not that's something you want to be a part of. Yes, savvy. Everybody good? Ready to go? Thumbs up, emojis, write in the text. Just want to be sure y'all are with me. Alrighty, cool. Well, if Bone is ready to go, then everybody's ready to go. Hi, Bone. Alrighty. So, intro. It's me. Um, I'm currently studying media studies and communications at UC Berkeley here in sunny Cal, California. If you're in the Northern California area, you might know that it's going to be 110 to 114 today. So that really sucks. Um, but hey, that's fine. So I study communications. I'm really fascinated by the way people communicate, the way they send and receive these signals that we spend our entire lives trying to interpret. So a lot of my presentations are soft skills and oriented around those things. Um, as some of you know, if not all of you, uh, I'm here all the time. Uh, I love the community. Uh, I've been involved in the community since 2015 uh, as a judge, as a presenter, and a conference attendee. Um, I always love the opportunity to learn, and I especially love the opportunity to teach, share some wisdom, share some life experience. Uh, I earned that grade in my beard, I tell you. Currently, I'm working as a training lead at Sonic.com. It's a local ISP up here in Northern California. I coordinate all the training through the entire field service department. I also do a lot of interviews, both for internal and external candidates, which is kind of what drove me to want to do a presentation on this. And last but not least, uh, I've been a judge since 2015, and in the before times, I was a back house lead for CFBP. Alrighty, that's enough about me. Uh, I recognize a fair amount of you uh, having worked with you on staff. Uh, big love to those of you that I've worked with before, and hello to those of you I've never met. So, as previously mentioned, I'm going to break this down into three separate sections. The first of which is going to be judging your way into college, specifically talking about application letters. Um, I thought about scholarships as well, but there, there's enough transference between the two where I think applications can kind of uh, cover it all. <laughs> Actually, right, so. uh, Part two will be judging your way into the workplace. We'll look at resumes and CVs, talk about work experience and job description. And last but not least, we'll talk about judging our way through an interview. Um, that's my favorite part of this. Uh, I will ask a series of questions. I would love for all of you, or some of you, not all of you, that would be kind of distracting. I would love for some of you to go on mic if you don't mind and answer some questions. It's free interview practice. It's good for you. It's good for me. Win-win. Right? What more could you want? I see a Michael Perry typing. Hello, Michael. Lose, lose. I don't think anybody's losing today. We're all learning. It's going to be happy fun times. All right. So before we get started, um, before I get started, I'd like to ask: uh, Have any of you recently applied to a college of any kind? A junior college, a four-year university, a trade school, anything where you had to write a letter of some sort or fill out a form about yourself. Uh, if you've done that recently, please let it be known. Um, type in the chat, or if you'd like to, please go on mic and tell me about your experience of what it was like for you to fill out that form. It can certainly be daunting. Learning is winning, says Nathaniel Graham. I could not agree more, my friend. See a couple people typing. Hashtag 
hashtag always learning. Uh, annual reviews at work count. Uh, can we do any kind of documentation for that? Are you, uh, is it like a self-assessment? Joe's Guide to Advancing Your Career in an Hour or Less. And if you don't like it, you'll get your money back. Minus shipping and handling. Kim, <laughs> go ahead. Yes, absolutely. Kind of what we want to focus on right here. 
Uh, I am planning to go back to school for PhD in Queer Theory and Psychology. Um, I haven't heard of that one specifically, Gabby, uh, but at Berkeley, I believe gender studies is the closest thing to that. Thomas is finishing up his doctorate. Thomas, what's your doctorate going to be in? Please tell the class. Learning and instruction, I love it. <clears throat> Maybe you can give me some feedback after this. Alrighty, so um, the college application can be kind of daunting. Uh, there's a lot of stuff, uh, you know, grades, classes you've taken, et cetera, et cetera. But one of the great things, um, I graduated with a double, ma double bachelor's in political science and psychology before the pandemic. I'm thinking of applying for a master's in public management. Mark, I wish you all the best of luck with that. That sounds amazing. Um, anyways, college applications are somewhat daunting, but there's a part of it that's, that's not. And that's the part where you get to kind of sell yourself and, and pump yourself up a little bit because it's asking about extracurricular activities. So uh, here's some screenshots of what I wrote. Um, I just took the little snippets because I didn't want to bore you with a wall of text, but let's talk about those things and let's see how they can kind of line up with what they're looking for here. So a lot of these places are looking for not only academic excellence, but they're looking for, you know, are you a good leader? Can you contribute and build up a community? Um, you know, what what assets can you bring to a campus aside from, you know, your good, good brain? So for me, the first thing I, I did was the low-hanging fruit. And I know I'm going, going a little meta here and talking about presenting while I'm presenting, but that's exactly what we're uh, what we're doing here. So extracurricular activity um, number three on my list was being a presenter. Um, presenting demonstrates the ability to communicate a message to an intended audience. Also demonstrates actively participating in community building and development, especially as it pertains to being a judge. As a presenter, you are using your expertise to enrich the community. Um, show of hands, emojis, thumbs up. Who here has been a presenter before? Um, I recognize some familiar faces, um, but whether you've done it already or wish to do it in the future, uh, I think the ability to reach out to your peers and share your knowledge um, is a great skill to have. And it's certainly a great skill to have uh, as it pertains to college whether you're taking communications classes or anything else, there will be a point in time where you have to speak up and speak out and get information to your peers or to your teachers. So doing something like presenting can really give you a leg up. Hi, yup, thumbs up, heart, yup, love it, love to see it. The next thing I uh, listed was the Judge Buddy program. Demonstrates mentorship, community building, Assessment to leadership skills, communication skills, and the overall desire to elevate your peers and create a welcoming, inclusive environment. Who here has been part of the Judge Buddy program? Um, would anyone like to go on mic and talk about your experience with that, um, having been a Sherpa for a brand new staff member? I would love to hear it. Otherwise, you can type it in the chat. Bona, I have done it a little bit. Wonderful. Brian says yes. Kyle, hi, Kyle says, yeah. Craig, long ago, but yeah. Awesome. Anyone have any experiences from that they'd like to go on mic and share? If not, that's totally cool. That was my judge buddy. I say this a judge and staff member because of that experience. Kyle, if you're trying to make me blush or make me cry, <laughs> it's pretty close to both. So, thank you. I appreciate that, and I appreciate you. We had a good time. So let me ask you. Those were just examples, but what else can we add to that list as it pertains to being a judge? Think about your experience as a judge or a staff member, and what other things could you mention in those letters? I'm going to let you type for a minute. I'm going to step away for just a moment. But please, please uh, go ahead and fill up that chat box and tell me what you are, what you were suggesting. Be right back.
what little steps you're taking, right? Every little thing from setting up table numbers to uh, making announcements. So you have to have a lot of time management skills, public speaking skills, um, and these things translate really well when you are applying for a job. You go, oh, I judge, so uh, I have to have specialized knowledge in the game, right? So you, you clearly show a dedication to learning new things. Um, you do a lot of public speaking, so you're, you're talking to customers all the time, right? Someone has a question, you need to answer it, you're prepping for announcements. It's, it's a way to really show that you can handle things coming your way because every day judging is different. I love it. Uh, Michael, that was absolutely perfect. Thank you so much for contributing. And uh, I hope your job works out and is an amazing career opportunity for you. Thank you. Thomas says, help to create a safe and enjoyable environment for customers. Nathaniel says, engaged. Uh, 2,000 patrons of a convention enrolled and engaged. Bronson. <laughs> Okay, Bronson has spoken. All right, let's move on. Uh, as uh, people keep typing, <laughs> the fan! So we've got a bird stream and we've got a fan stream. I love it. All right, so let's look at some job descriptions. Um, there are a couple, is that a cat I see? Uh, I've used the description of community growth and leadership, policy enforcement implementation, Customer relations that support 1,500 attendees. I'm definitely a fan of this presentation. Ha! Ah, you so funny. That actually made me genuinely laugh. That's not that's not 100% sarcastic. Anyways, so what I've done is I've chosen some do job descriptions. One that I was looking at myself, and one for the company that I worked for. And let's take a look at these and see how our judge skills kind of match up against those. But Bona disapproves. So, plainly speaking, uh, resume and CV is how you sell yourself to a potential employer, right? Uh, you have to find a way to separate yourselves uh, from separate yourself from everyone else. So, the ability to market yourself is kind of important for that. So, let's look at a job description. I'll leave that up on the screen for just a moment. And then I will highlight the points that I uh, thought were important here. All right, so <clears throat> you've had a moment to look. Let's highlight some points here. First and foremost, we're looking at um, we're looking at the communication aspect, um, and then we're looking at the social aspect here. So, as judge, your pre-event announcements typify the first part of this job description, right? So, whether you're making an announcement at F and M or you're holding the mic at the Grand Prix, um, as a judge, when you make your announcement, you have to get concise information out to a relatively large group of people in a short amount of time, right? And those of you that have done even a pre-release know that sometimes it's like herding cats. So it can be difficult to capture the attention of everybody, get the information out in a short amount of time, and organize people with what you were saying. Next, we're looking at the methods and techniques used in evaluating public attitudes and needs. Funny story, literally every interaction we have as judges, be it with judge to player, judge to judge, judge to staff, judge to TO, um, it's unique, right? Uh, Michael had mentioned that a little bit earlier, how judging is always different. 
So being able to shift your priorities uh, due to the fact that every interaction you have is different um, is super important, right? Uh, the ability to do this in a one-on-one -on -one setting can scale, and understanding the attitude of a player dictates your interactions. You show up to a table, a, judge, a, a player calls you over, you show up to the table. They have a snarky, sarcastic, you know, kind of bad attitude. Does that sway your does that set the tone? Absolutely, right? If they politely call you over um, and you they greet you with a smile, um, that sets the table for it to be a more pleasant interaction, right? Uh, this is kind of a cornerstone of interpersonal communication across the board. Whether we're talking about judges, whether we're talking about talking to our friends, to our partners, to whoever. Ken says, I work as a program manager in the tech industry. I'm very comfortable with working boots at trade shows, but I'm also frequently finding myself needing to explain complicated concepts to engineers and PMs, similar to a judge call. Love it. And last but not least, the job description is talking about how it's a diverse community. And I think we can all agree that gaming has a very unique, very diverse community um, that we all love very, very much. So being able to express, um, you know, Magic the Gathering community is very diverse. The ability to be inclusive and communicate effectively within the community um, can certainly translate to the workplace. You never, you want to be inclusive. You want to create a safe and welcoming and inclusive environment, and you never ever want to discriminate against anybody, especially in the state of California, the, discrimi the, the, the discrimination laws are very strict. So using your experience working in the gaming world, working as a judge or staff member um, can help you with that. And the importance of giving and receiving feedback also translates from the multiverse to the workplace. I love feedback. I can talk about it forever. But Meg is going to give you a feedback presentation later. I don't want to steal her thunder in any way, shape, or form. And I'm really looking forward to that one. So that job description was for a county communication specialist. And the salary range is something I would very much like to have. So uh, I'm not saying that those skills would translate directly to a 100K a year job, but if you look back at that job rec, there are certainly some ideas here and some concepts here that have a lot of transference from your skills as a judge. So next we'll move on and we'll look at uh, tech support at Sonic, the company that I work at. If any of you are in Northern California and you'd like a job, please let me know. So spend a minute and take a look at this. So the important thing to look at here are going to be the must-haves. And what I would like to do is go through those kind of slowly, show you how they correlate to being a judge or judge skills, and then we'll move on to the final part of the presentation, which, of course, is the, um, the interview, the mock interview, which is the most fun part, and I hope that all of you uh, jump in on that. So, here were the must-haves for that job description for tech support. I feel like these are pretty universal. So let's go over them one by one. Ability to think logically and problem solve. I think we can all do that. Friendly can-do attitude. I think to be on staff for literally any event, from an LGS to a Magic Fest, you have to have that. Eagerness to learn. We'll cover that here in a minute. Let's just go through them with, uh, with the info that I have linked, shall we? So, ability to think and logically and problem solve. Judges problem solve at literally every event they attend. Whether it's solving a logistical problem, a problem with product, uh, a people problem, a staff problem, a venue problem, uh, I feel like we are all somewhat uh, experts in this category. Um, I would love if you added in the text box or went on mic and told me uh, what your favorite problem you've ever solved in an event is, however big or small. I would love to hear it.
And it can literally be the smallest little thing, like I helped the kid find their deck, or I helped the child find their parents, or literally anything. But tell me about an experience you had at an event of any size where you solved a problem of any size that that stuck with you. Hopefully positively. Nathaniel just brought back the traumatic memory. <laughs> Bona, the story. Bona, are you going on mic? Or are you gonna? Uh, are you I gonna would love to share my story. Please do. So this was at SCG Con back in 2019, uh, in the latter half of the year. I was in red for the first time at this event, and during my event that I was in red for, we come to the end of the round and there is a game that is in progress where a player has been activating Thopter Sword uh, for many turns through, I think it was a Torpor Orb or something of that nature. And uh, the players realize in turns, hey, wait a minute, this is a problem. And after conferring with one of the other judges who was, who was on my team for the event, because this is a very game-altering outcome, um, we determined, you know, because no other real actions had been taken besides the Thopter Sword activations, uh, I deferred to his experience on this. Uh, mostly because I was a little intimidated. There's a lot going on at that event, but uh, we wound up backing up through three whole turn cycles of Doctor Sword activations. <laughs> it was a mess. It was a big mess, but it was neat in terms of a problem-solving experience. Like, that's not a thing you would normally ever think to do, but it wound up being just fine, honestly. <clears throat> Fabulous. Thank you for sharing. And I think that can be summarized by what we talked about earlier with uh, solving complex, uh, what Ken said, uh, explaining complicated concepts. Um, so you can certainly uh, put that spin on it if you would like. Thank you for sharing, Bon. Much appreciated. So next, we've got the friendly can-do attitude, right? We're all friendly people. Well, most of us. Judges are always happy to help players understand the rules and are always willing to help other judges, staff, and TOs. Eagerness to learn. I think Judge Academy has given us a nice place to do that. Plenty of modules. Also, shout out to Thomas for his new role. Very exciting. Good job, Thomas. But there are some companies out there, mine included, that have a huge, um, like, they really, really encourage education. They really, really encourage self-improvement. Um, the company that I work for, Sonic, will pay for your classes if they are relevant to your job. So uh, I think that's pretty amazing. Uh, and being able to describe to somebody in your uh, resume and CV uh, that you are a part of Judge Academy and you are taking, you know, you're taking classes and you're finding a way to improve yourself, I think that goes a long way with employers. Effective verbal, written, and communication skills. Uh, judges have to be excellent communicators towards players and other tournament staff. I think that is very clear, right? Um, what has been my experience in the workplace, and let me know if you've had a similar or a different uh, experience, is that there are a lot of people that are really, really smart. They're very book smart. They're very technically excellent. Pardon me. They're very technically excellent. They do a certain skill very, very well. But when it comes to something like communication and verbalizing things and putting their thoughts into coherent speech that somebody else can follow, um, Sometimes that's a, that's a skill that's somewhat hard to find. <laughs> skill? So being a good communicator um, will absolutely go a million miles. 
uh, in the professional world, and that you know that translates so like so directly to judging. Literally everything you do, and honestly, just playing the game of magic. This entire game is built on communication. Uh, there was just a presentation that I was just in talking about shortcuts. Uh, shortcuts also have to be communicated properly, right? Next, having an interest in computers and the internet. Well, um, what are we doing right now? For the last year plus, we've been on Zoom, we've been on Discord, we've been on Microsoft Teams, uh, you know, hosting conferences, keeping this whole thing alive. And, you know, doubling down on the Judge Academy involvement and doubling down on what we're doing right now as a community, um, that ties in a lot with some tech-type jobs. You're constantly learning how to navigate new software. You know, uh, show of hands, um, I'll write it in the text box. Um, did you first use Zoom during the pandemic? Wait, this is the internet? I love it. So I would expect that a decent amount of you, so there, yeah, here, quick, uh, there will be some outliers, but I, I would think that there would be uh, a decent amount of you that use Zoom or Microsoft Teams or Discord for, you know, either the first time or you've seldom used it before the pandemic. So this has kind of forced everybody to evolve, and it's kind of forced everybody to, um, today's your first Zoom. Congratulations. Welcome. Um, it's kind of forced people to evolve, and it's forced people to learn new skills. And a lot of companies are moving in that direction, especially the events field. Um, I know that a lot of you are excited about, you know, the Flesh and Blood events that have been announced. Um, there are definitely things that are reopening, but there are a lot of businesses, a lot of a lot of industries that have moved to a digital platform. And for as many event coordinator, event manager jobs that existed in the before times, a lot of them now are moving to digital. Digital event management, digital event specialist, digital storyteller. So um, we've kind of over the last year. Uh, it's been a forced evolution towards uh, using the internet and using uh, computers to do so. So, and the game magic had a lot of computer science concepts such as stacks and interrupts. I had never used it prior or even heard of it, says Mona. All right, wonderful. Um, definitely a wide swath of experience. Fritz was typing. I literally went from planning a physical conference starting in January 2020 for May 2020 and had to learn on the fly around April 2020 how to do a digital conference. There you have it. Uh, that is a great example, Chris. Thank you for sharing. Um, those of you that are teachers, Nathaniel, Thomas, uh, what was your experience like uh, moving to digital? Would either of you like to go on mic and share your experience or type it in the text? Sure. Um, it was uh, pretty chaotic, really. Um, it was it was oh so important. Uh, and I've learned a lot doing it. Um, the wrangling the little darlings um, was was actually quite hard this uh, last fall. Um, when we were purely virtual, but there's a lot, I, I, there's a lot of parts of it that I like because I could turn it into a, a couple of dedicated, um, overviews and, uh, like more direct help time, uh, because what I ended up doing was, uh, creating videos if I couldn't find videos um, and posting in our learning management system so that our Zoom time could really focus on filling in the holes. So um, Zoom's been interesting. Um, and the breakout room technology is real good for small group work. Um, and you can even use Zoom for bridge home and like in the room wherever they're supposed to be, right? Like you can bring people together. So, um, yeah, 
absolutely. And uh, I think Ken nailed it. Pretty much all companies are now tech companies. Most just don't know it. That's perfect. Thank you for sharing, Nathaniel. Appreciate you. All right. And then last but not least, the personal integrity and strong work ethic, which all of us possess because we're all good humans, right? All of us are good humans, right? Right? <clears throat> Judges are held to an extremely high standard of personal integrity as they are ambassadors to the game of Magic the Gathering. So you have the personal integrity with uh, your interpretation of the rules when it comes to um, your paying customers and also working for TOs, you know, being around stacks and stacks of product and all the cool stuff from the prize wall, et cetera, et cetera. You have to be a person of high integrity to be in that environment and not, you know, not do bad things. <laughs> Finn says, right, I detected hints of sarcasm. <laughs> Look for the line in the chart. See if some of you are typing, I'll let you finish up, and then we'll get into my favorite segment. We've got just under 20 minutes left, so we're going to spend the last little bit of time doing some mock interviews. Um, so for my company, I do uh, both video interviews and in-person interviews. Uh, the video ones tend to go better for me uh, because, you know, I look like a James Bond movie villain, so sometimes, I guess, when I'm standing across from someone who doesn't uh, know me, um, or know that I'm a relatively friendly, benevolent creature, uh, they might, you know, think that I'm scary. So, uh, having the ability to kind of lighten the mood a little bit and ask some fun questions that are not, you know, off the script um, are nice. So, I'm going to ask a series of questions. I'll post them one by one, and I would really love for some brave volunteers to humor me with a mock interview. Uh, consider it practice for your next interview, um, and consider it a service to your community for helping a brother out with this presentation. Uh, reputation matters, just like being a judge. Other industries are small, and people know each other. But relatively, really friendly. Oh, stop. Would go on. So, uh, we've all been on one side. Ah, you're making me blush. Um, I, I'm happy to be able to hug people again, so if you are around and you want a consensual hug, I got you. So all of us have likely been on one side of the chair or the other. Um, Chris wants hugs. Uh, I've got hugs for all of you who want it. As long as it's consensual, you will all get hugs the next time I see you. So, um, We've all been on the left. Not many of us have been on the right. Maybe some of you have, but, you know, this is a necessary part of, of offering and, and getting a job. So, um, we have our normal job, uh, our normal questions that we ask that are specific to the job, but there are some fun ones that are a little bit looser. And those are the ones that I'm going to focus on with our last 15 minutes or so. <laughs> Bugs. Yep, 15 minutes. Here you loud and clear. So, um, think of your experience as a judge or as a staff member. Think about helping the people that you've helped. Think about the duties that you've done. And think about how you're going to correlate that to these, uh, these uh, questions. So, Ken, I'm actually attending tax, and I'm really excited about that. So, hopefully I see some of y'all at tax. Just bought my badge of yesterday. So let's get started. I've only got about 15 minutes left, so I want to get through this part. So I need a brave volunteer to answer. What do you do for fun outside of work? Please go on the mic or type in the text box, but tell me about the fun, fun voyage that it is being a judge. Describe it to me so I have an interest in uh, you as a person. You're trying to set yourself apart, so tell me about judging. Please. If you don't want to share, that is totally fine. I will move on to the very next part. Ken, and I'm with Daniel. I'm happy to Please. share. One. One thing I really enjoy is traveling and meeting new people. 
So as a magic judge, I get to go around the world to different events and help uh, bring joy and, and educate uh, the community. Oh, wow. uh, where's the coolest place you got to travel to? So far, I've made it to mostly the United States and Canada. Uh, but now that my my daughter is in college, I'm looking forward to being able to travel more. Wonderful. Thank you for caring. Anyone else? So, uh, as a magic judge uh, outside the game, um, I spend a lot of time doing personal development on the weekends and catching up with friends that I haven't got to see during the pandemic. And also, uh, I've been playing Commander on the weekends, which is a form of the game. And I get to play with people all around the world. So uh, it's sort of my social outlet. Wonderful. Uh, I, I've got some friends that play this. Uh, it, so you're a powerful wizard. Wonderful. Welcome aboard. Uh, Joel Ritchie says, playing helps teach players how to teach both kids and adults how to play magic. Wonderful. Um, Nat posts some lovely discussions on his Discord server. Also true. Nat, if you want to post uh, your link in the chat here, feel free. So, uh, moving right along, next question. Can you describe a situation where you turn a negative customer interaction into a positive interaction? There's, you know, that's the low-hanging fruit. You probably hear that in almost every customer service-oriented interview. Anyone have an example they would like to share, either in text or on the mic? Please feel free. I see some typing. I'll give it a minute or two, and then we'll move on. And Nathaniel has posted his Discord. If you have an interest, you should totally jump on that. Give it just a minute for the people that are typing, and then we'll move on. Ryan says, reminding some players at FNM during events, I am not your friend, <laughs> and I will remind you that you are late for hours. <laughs> Extreme negative interactions are easier to transform than neutral interactions. Is there anyone out there that has a good customer service story from a, a magic event of any kind? I helped little Timmy find their deck. Vona, be my guest. Would you like to go on mic or would you like to put it in the chat? So I once ran a PTQ for a local LGS where their head judge was unavailable to run a PTQ that day for them. And I had made a great impression on some of the locals there by stepping up last minute to help make this thing that otherwise would not have been able to happen, happen. And several months later, while on a different event as staff at a Grand Prix, that same batch of locals saw me, recognized me months later from the fact and came raising to me asking when I would be back to run more events for them. And they were so excited to see me there running a huge tournament in that fashion. You love to hear it. Thank you for sharing. All right, Thomas and then Ken, and then we got to move on. Okay. Uh, I, it was GP Phoenix, one of the ones at the end of 2019, 2020. Uh, side of Atlanta, uh, there is a uh, mother with um, a couple of, well, that seems to be in charge of bringing all the kids to the event that day, and they are all in side of Atlanta. Uh, she asked a whole bunch of questions as I'm walking around about how the game works, how the structure works. She's hanging out, watching the kids try to play with each other, try to figure out how the match, the game works. They're going through some pre-cons. And as the day goes on, the kids do booster back, booster blitz, and they do like a round or two. And then they're really incited, but you can hear the conversation of a couple of the kids. They're all trying to figure out how we keep doing this, how we keep making this work. And I walked over and I went and I grabbed all the extra stack um, of boost packs I had with me and myself, dropped them on the table, sat down, and just said, okay, this is how we play Blitzy Blitz, and sat there for like an hour and just walked all the kids through the extra step of it. 
to the point where the mom's like, oh, like this is great. This is what they want to be doing. We're bringing, we're coming back. We're going to keep the kid. Like they came back the next day and spent the whole entire day just jamming grass. And as it turned a, what seemed to be an overwhelming moment for the kids and the parent to, they're going to constantly come back and want to be doing more stuff. We love to see it. Thanks for sharing. Can you have one or do you want to see what the next prompt is? Ken is no longer here. Ken has been assimilated by the robots. The board? Hello, I'm, I am. <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, so, wait. There, there was a time when, back when we used to have large grant, um, pre releases in, in a single place, um, I was I was judging, I'm walking around on the floor, and I noticed a bunch of um, people sitting around a big table and like kind of looking around, which, as everyone knows, is, that's a judge. Um, people are supposed to be looking at each other, not at like look, looking around, wondering what's going on. So anytime you see people's heads sticking up like like gophers, or then you know that something's weird. Um, so I went over to just kind of find out, and people had been sitting there for more than ten minutes and had no idea what was going on. So I went and. Uh, like checked in with the TO. The TO said, "Oh, you found a problem. Well, then it's yours to deal with." And so then all of a sudden, my phone's running that flight. Um, so I got everything going, gave a nice like intro, apologized for the delay, um, got things like running smoothly, and uh, and everyone playing and having a good time. Um, by the the end of the third round of, of four, um, I was at the end of my shift because I was actually had been there all morning. And uh, so I had to introduce the, the next judge that was going to be taking over for me to, to finish the fight. And when I made the announcement of handing off to the other judge, um, everyone at the table gave me a standing ovation. It was like 120, <laughs> 120 people or something. It was like, it was, it was a big fight. And uh, like, it's the most amazing thing. It's like being a, a pitcher um, walking off the mound in the seventh inning or something when in baseball when everyone, like, you know, in the stands applauds. So it was, like, so that was taking a negative experience where at first they, they didn't know what was going on. Like, understanding their pain, empathizing, bringing the excitement back into it, helping them get back into, like, the groove and, and enjoying it. And then, uh, and then being recognized for it at the end was just the cherry on top. You love to see it. That is a great shooter that's management material in that movie. All right, we've only got a few minutes left. So, office um, space. Yeah, it was office space. Wonderful. Uh, somebody who's as old as I am. Great. Last, uh, I believe, last but not least, how do you get someone to go along with an idea or a concept they don't understand? This is something that happens literally all the time. It happens at pre releases a lot, actually. Um, because you get a wide group of people that typically play at the kitchen table under their own types of rules. Uh, so sometimes you have some interactions that, you know, they don't exactly get. So can somebody tell me a, give me a quick example of uh, a time where you help somebody understand an idea or a concept that they previously didn't? I think Ken is typing. We'll stand by for a moment. Explaining stack. Perfect. Uh, 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 uh. Right? Delivering rulings, penalties at a competitive event. Play loud and clear. Thank you. Many a time, the most experienced person from an off scene did a lot of the teaching. A lot of the teaching would fall on me. You love to see it. A couple more people typing, and then we'll wrap up here at the end. Got about four minutes left. Moment is a teachable moment if you have the time. Ken, that's well said. Absolutely 
wonderful. Dan, anything else you would like to tell me about yourself? Uh, that was a pretty general statement. That's not super specific to judging, but if you didn't get the opportunity to highlight the travel and the community building and helping people learn rules and positive customer service interactions, that last little question is typically the last one in interviews, a perfect spot for you to jump in and talk about your values as a judge, just like Ken was saying. So, that wraps it up for um, you gained a lot of skills for judging using the Elevate Yourself in Academia and Professional World. Take some time and map out those skills and help yourself understand how they correlate to those uh, transferable work skills that you see on those job descriptions. And find some time to contribute to your community through judging or some other means. Uh, any community work, community service, community building is going to go an actual million miles when it comes to um, college acceptances, uh, filling out your you know applications, and especially in the professional world, uh, having somebody who is capable of being a leader and capable of elevating the people around them. Um, because pro tip, uh, sometimes, uh, most times I would say, uh, the contributions, your contributions, if they reach further than yourself, are more valuable than those individual accolades. So we are out of time. Thank you so, so much for being here. Much appreciated. Uh, thank you, Chris, for the opportunity. And uh, do take care and enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you.